Today I would like to discuss the matrix factorization A is equal to CR, which I came across in uh, Gilbert Strang's latest linear algebra series, part one. And uh, I, found it a fa I found it fascinating, so I decided to dissect it, and that's the result, and the result is this video. Uh, I, I might add that I, I found the, like, the linear algebra lectures, videos of uh, Kahn and Strang to be absolutely invaluable and uh, educating and, and very, very clear. So now, uh, let A, I'll take a specific example, let A consist of the columns V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. Let R be the reduced row echelon form of A, which uh, in this case is... I'm giving it as this. And finally, I'm going to designate the first three columns of A by C equal V1, v, by the matrix V1, V2, V3. Now, uh, the first thing that stands out is if I look at the reduced row echelon form of the matrix V1, matrix C, uh, I note that I get this matrix here, which is the first part of R. And the reason for that is if you calculate the reduced row echelon form, you only change rows, you don't change columns. So this is immediate, and this says that V1, V2, and V3 are linearly independent. So that, that's an immediate result from the factorization. Uh, next, I would like to look at the null space of A, and the null space of A is all solutions of AX equals zero, or Rx equals 0 because the, 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 the solution to Ax equals 0 and Rx equals 0 are the same. The, the process of getting the reduced row echelon form doesn't change the solutions to Ax equals 0. Then if I solve Rx equals 0, I get this x1, x2, x3 given there. Now, I can write the solution vector x with this information as x4 times this column plus x5 times that column and where x4 and x5 are the free variables here and a x1, x2, and x3 are the pivot variables 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I, I left it in the, with the minus sign there to make the direct substitution but of course the minus sign can be factored out but I no point in rewriting that again with another take up room rewriting that again. Now this here says x1, all, all, these, all vectors x are given by this, this is the null space and these two are linearly independent, these two vectors are the null space basis for A and you can see that it has dimension 2 or it has dimension 2 for now, all right. Now if I look at Ax equals 0 and write it out as v1 x1 plus v2 x2 plus v5 x5 equal to 0. And then I let x4 equal 1 and x5 equal 0 in the, solu in, in, in the solution here for x. Then I find that uh, for x, a x equals 0. Then I f if I substitute for x1, I, I, x5 is 0. I substitute x4 as equal to 1. Then I get v1 is minus a1 v, v1 a minus x1 is minus a1 x2 is minus a2 and x3 is minus a3 plus v4 because x4 is 1 and v5 is 0 equal to 0 if i solve for that i get v4 is equal to c1 v1 v2 v3 times a1 a2 a3 and i'm just writing the solution in, in matrix vector product form and I get that V5 is similar by setting X5 equal to 1 and X4 equal 0. I get this as V5 as, what you, as, that, as that. And then finally, if I multiply C times R, I get V1, V2, V3 times this. And the result is that V1, V2, V3 times this section gives me V1, V2, V3 again. And then V1, V2, V3 times A1, A2, A3 gives me v4 and v1, v2, v3 times v1, v2, v3 gives me v5, which is equal to a. Now, there, there, uh, there's a, an interesting, re you, you, 
the, the formula A equals CR also gives, gives you information about the, the row space of A and the dimension of the row space of A. So if I write A equals CR, what that says is that the rows of A are linear combinations of the rows of R. For example, CR, to get the first row of A, I multiply the first row of this times these rows. And second row is the second row of this times these three rows. So each row of this times time giving a linear combination of these rows. And that says that the row span of A is less than or equal to the row span of R. Next, I can also write, and I'll show how down here, that R is equal to key KA. And that says that the row span of R is less than or equal to the row span of A by the same multiplication principles as here. Uh, now, uh, I note, to get this formula here, I note that, and, and, and this, is, uh, this is from, prof uh, from Professor Strang, this, this proof here, as is this whole thing actually, that uh, if I write A equals CR and multiply both sides by C transpose A, I get that formula, then I note down here that C transpose C is invertible, so I can solve this for R as follows, and that's equal to KA. You, you can look at it at your leisure. And also, to show that CTC is invertible, I'm going to try to solve CTC times X equal to zero. If I do, I can, then I can re rewrite this by multiplying both sides by X transpose. I get X transpose C tra transpose times uh, CX equal to zero. That's the square of a vector. Therefore, Cx is equal to zero because the linear columns of because the columns of C are linearly independent. That only has the solution uh, Cx equal to zero, which implies that x is equal to zero. Which implies that x is equal to zero, which means that uh, Ctc is uh, a, a, a singular. Singular. Uh, uh, the only solution to uh, uh, all right. So it says that C T C is invertible. All right. The only solution to C T C x equals zero is x equals zero, which says that C T C is invertible. And so I can multiply this by C T C to the minus one. There, C T C. Uh, it, it's it's easier to just follow. <laughs> to just see that it's a, it's a simple argument, it's easy to follow and to just describe it. All right. So finally, the, the results we get from the... Uh, oh, and, and, and then... Uh, okay, so from these two equations, we conclude that since the row span of A is less than the row span of R, and the row span of R is less than equal to the row span of A, we conclude that the row span of A is equal to the row span of R. And uh, every row span of R, which means that the uh, which means that every row of A is a linear combination of the rows of R, and also that the dimension of the row the row, sp row span of A is the row span of R. So the the dimension of the row space of A is the dimension of the row space of R, and that's equal to 3. So the null space... So the null space of A has the dimension R equal 3. A little confusing, how about <laughs> I got a little... I'm not going to make this damn thing over again. We're going to... That'll come hell or high water when we finish this damn video now, the way it is. Okay, so... The, in, 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 so the information that we've gotten from this dissect, you're going to have to think about this a little bit. It, it, it's, it's clear, even though I didn't do a good job of explaining it. Uh, so we've, co we've come up with the column rank of A is equal to uh, the number of columns here, which is 3, or in general, R. The null space of, uh, 
the null space dimension is the dimension uh, of, of these two columns, of, of these two columns, which is two, and uh, or in general n minus r, and, and the rows, the rows of r, and then we also have that the rows of r span the row space of A, and the row rank of A is equal to three, which is equal to R, which is equal to the column rank. Okay, that's, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>